government has a responsibility to ensure that the commonwealth is used to meet the common needs and not simply left to the markets. Markets are tremendously important, and I could talk all day about why we need good markets and why they need to function, but they can't do everything. They won't ensure the economic rights. And today we don't really have competitive markets because of the concentration of power and so on. But you say, well, I get accused a lot of times, say, well, you're talking about being a socialist. You want big government or a communist or something of that nature. You're talking about rights, human rights. I say, no, I'm, I'm being a fundamental kind of grassroots, uh, patriotic American. Uh, you go back and read why they established uh, the United States of America. Go back and, and read the Declaration of Independence. It says, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men, that all people are created equal, and they're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the next line is, to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men. Is that the purpose of government? To secure these rights, deriving its just power from the consent of the governed. That's what we're talking about. The consent of the governed to ensure the basic human rights of people. Right, liberty, pursuit of happiness, everything else is dependent upon life. And if we're to be able to live and have the liberty to pursue happiness, we have to have clean air, clean water, nutritious food, and I would argue we have to be able to interact with nature. We're a part of that nature. You can go to the Constitution, and what does our Constitution say in the preamble? Why reform this union to establish justice, provide, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, ensure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity? It says that the general welfare, the blessings of liberty, not just liberty, but the blessings of that freedom for ourselves and for all generations of the future. These are foundational principles upon which this country was built. That's what we're talking about here. In democracy, we're all of equal inherent worth, but folks, we're not all of equal economic ability. And it's not all our fault. It's because of the way we're born, our physical, our mental capacities, the homes in which we're nurtured, the communities in which are nurtured, the opportunities we have to meet those chance and chances that lead to great successes. We are unequal in terms of our economic ability inherently, and therefore it is the responsibility of all of us to work through government to ensure that we have equal dignity because we all have some non-economic value to contribute to humanity to the extent that we lack economic ability and all we should be asked to do is to make that contribution to do whatever we can. And when our non-economic value to society is not recognized, we feel marginalized, disenfranchised, and even if we have enough to eat, we feel left out. 